welcome to episode 150 of Anime and Us. I'm TJ. And I'm Sean. And this is the review show that reviews anime from A to Z. Sort of. All right, guys. So you picked. That's my pick. Yeah, wow. Well, we You picked Samurai Jack. I did pick Samurai Going Jack. Going with your theme of non-anime animations. Mm-hmm. Essentially. Uh, Samurai Jack uh, aired on Cartoon Network from 2001 to 04, 2004. And then it re-released for a season in 2017. I I found out um, that apparently the original series stopped, like, just ended on a cliffhanger, essentially. And so the new series came back and actually finished. Oh. So. That makes sense. At least it's got an ending. Yeah, at least it wasn't like, let's just add a season. Yeah. That's no. kind of, that's okay. Uh, is an American animated action-adventure television series created by Gendy Tartakovsky? Tartakovsky. Tarta. Uh, Tara. Tarta Kavaski. Tarta Kavaski. Yeah. Or Cartoon Network. Tartavaski conceived Samurai Jack after finishing his work on his first Cartoon Network original series, Dexter's Laboratory. I told you we got, I got a feel when we were watching those two episodes. I got a Dexter Laboratory feel about that. Yep. Uh, which premiered in 1996. We both watched that. Yep. Samurai Jack was apparently inspired by the Kung Fu TV show, which came out in 1972, starring David Carradine. 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 Sorry. I liked this show. Oh, did you? Yeah. <laughs> Unless, the, I, I, maybe I liked the show. I don't, there was a different, I, or maybe it was this show, maybe it was a different show, where he was like a kung fu guy helping detectives solve crimes. Was that kung fu? I don't know. I never saw the show. Because if it was kung fu, then I f***ing liked kung fu. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, well, let me, well, give me like three seconds. I'm going to copy and paste the show into another page and see what pops up. Oh, come on, give me f***ing images. God f***ing sake. No. No, no, this was not the uh, the show that I liked, <laughs> but um, I did. He there was a TV show where he was like this kung fu Eastern medicine, you know, master, and he was helping detectives <laughs> do crime, solve crime, uh, and he would like make a remedy for the Eastern medicine part of the show whenever someone got like <laughs> shot or something. It was dumb as shit, but I remember <laughs> watching it on TV before the internet. Well, before I had the internet. And, uh, you know, it's like, you're bored and it's on TV. What else are you going to watch? Yeah. That was it. <laughs> All right. Sorry. A little, little tangent, but that was kind of interesting. And it's kind of interesting that Samurai Jack is inspired by that. Because apparently, uh, Tartavosky has a fascination with Samurai culture. Well, makes sense. It does and it doesn't. Because, like, if you're fascinated with Samurai culture, you did a real piss poor job in the first 12 episodes of portraying that. Because, like... The only thing I get out of Samurai, out of Samurai Jack, is that he holds his f***ing sword properly. Everything else is like, how is he a samurai? He just looks to be an Asian guy with a sword. I mean, the whole honor and stuff, not fighting when people want to fight. That just means he has a code. It doesn't mean he has f***ing samurai Well, that's what all samurais were, where they were codes. Not necessarily that code. By the way, I'm currently playing Ghost of Tsushima. Fantastic game. (laughs) Way more. I'm only like four hours into it. Way more samurai lore and samurai in-depthness. Yeah, but this is also a cartoon aimed on Cartoon Network aimed for kids. So, I don't know. They did a good job of aiming it for kids. And I also equally feel they did a piss poor job with it. It is. Because it's clearly a kids show. Like, there's nothing appealing to it to me. But at the same time, there's an artsy fartsiness There's to it. very artsy, yes. That I don't see many six-year-olds giving a shit about. Yeah, I don't... It's very slow in point parts, and it's very quiet. There are some episodes where there's a handful of words spoken. Yeah. It's very atmospheric. Yes. And and art. It's, it's, it's trying to pull you in as an adult viewer, right. as an older viewer. Maybe a teen viewer. Right. But I don't think it does that very well. And I don't feel it does the uh, the kid show part particularly well either. I think it, it's these two ideas clashing. I think, especially in the early episodes, because I'm sure the show gets better. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure too. I mean, they made a, we only a co- final season for a right. reason. We covered the first twelve episodes of it because that's pretty practically a first season of a thing. And there's like uh, it really was, wasn't it? There was like yeah. that was a first season. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the twelfth episode, I I don't. It was accidental. That I did. It, was, it, fit. It, it fit perfectly for how to end it, the episode we ended on anyway. But it also felt like the first 12 episodes was more about world building yeah. than anything else. But I don't know if the rest of the show is much different, at least not for the foreseeable future, because it didn't feel like they were going in a different direction. It felt very episodic. Samurai Jack meets this group of people that needs help. He either helps them or wait. Oh no, they're actually the bad guy. 
and he learns some sort of lesson along the way, whether right. the lesson means I'm now astronaut trained. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Or, you know, uh, Scottish men are cool. <laughs> you know, you like, well, we that's kind of it. You don't learn a whole lot. We did learn that Scotsman is like Samurai Jack, though. But what was, what was weird about that episode is at the end, they become friends and it fades to black. Where are they in the next episode? They didn't depart from each other. So uh, that sort of episodic was bad. They, you should have been like, all right, hey, I'm going my way on the bridge, you're going your way, and then that's it. That would have been fine, but they right. didn't do that. So, like, he should have been in the next episode. Right. Like, I, I'm actually curious if... I'm sure he comes back. If other characters... I'm, I'm, I'm fairly certain at least he comes back. Right. So, like, I think that's the problem, because the first 12 episodes are so episodic, but... Unfortunately, yes. But, well, besides the first three. The first three weren't. Well, it was because that was a movie. <laughs> it was really setting up the premise. Right. And then the re- extra nine episodes were setting up the rest of the premise for the rest of the show. Right. And, I, and just, I'm just, i just wondering if we just didn't get, get, far enough. get far enough into it. Maybe. Because... I don't feel like the episodicness is going to stop, though. I think that's that's a theme. I think that's how the show works. But I did see in a couple of things, there were a part, couple of part ones and part twos. Which is fair. So... so it's better uh, than not having part one and part twos. Right. So, like, I'm just, I don't, I don't know. But the show is, like, I'm not going to lie. There was one or two episodes and I'm sitting there and I'm falling asleep. Like, <laughs> they're not talking. They're just, like, running through the world, getting from point A to point B, wordlessly fighting some guys, running through the world again, getting from point A to point B. And it's like, oh, this is like, immensely there's, boring. There's an episode called The, the Blind Archers. <laughs> <laughs> the blind archers also don't talk, which means Samurai Jack also isn't talking. Right, so that episode is mostly quiet, but there's like a good five minutes in there where Sam- Samurai Jack gets his ass kicked by the archers, but in order to to defeat them, he's got to be blind and use his ears. But they be better than them right. somehow. But <laughs> immediately. But in order to do this, he's got to He's got to, like, blindfold. Be naked? And be naked. He has to take his robe off. For some reason. Kimono. But he's got to be... So he's got to be blind. And they spend five minutes showing us this visually. Like, it's black. And then we can hear the steers in the snow (laughs) and the water over here. And it just goes on. And I'm like, I'm falling asleep. But I'm just like, what happened? And so, that's like me with most animes. I actually paid a little bit better attention overall on this one than a lot of the other ones. But it's still immensely boring. It is boring, and but it was. It's not the boring that we're used to. I think it's, it's different. It's, it's because it's purposeful boring. Yeah, it's just not good to be. Just because you did something purposely doesn't make it good. Right. I don't know. It's. I don't want to go too harsh on it because. Yeah, I mean, I don't think we should go too harsh on it either. I think. I, I do think it's slightly uh, what we saw was slightly below average. I don't think it does the kids show part particularly well, and I don't think it does the teen audience pulling you in right to the theme and the setting. I don't think it does that particularly well either. Before we continue, premise. premise? <laughs> um, nine minutes in, <laughs> Samurai Jack is in. I'm assuming East Asia. Yeah, uh, it, I think we find out that he's a thousand years in the future. Well, back then. Yeah, one more when he goes into the future. Yeah. Well, Premise. I know. He I'm doesn't just... go in the future for a while. He's a baby. His uh, his dad defeated Aku forever ago. Now he's not a baby. Now he's a young boy, and he's teaching. He's learning this way of the sword. And uh, his father teaches him about the great sword that's magical that was defeated Aku, great evil. But apparently, Aku's only asleep. And Aku comes back, kills his dad. His mom, for some reason, gives him off to some random. F- people on a boat. I still say that is the, like, the royal boat. Uh, but you boat. don't know that, because they didn't f-ing say it. They just see a flag. We it, don't know it's their flag. It's we don't implied. know if it's any flag. It's, implied. it's not implied. Yeah, it's implied. It's not implied. Okay. It absolutely isn't. Whatever. <laughs> she just finds a boat. There's a man on the boat. You don't even know if he's the f-ing captain. <laughs> and she hands her ch- small child over to him. Uh-huh. No and, words. He, ha- he takes him where to- he needs to be. So he does. I'm, I'm saying that's why it was planned. He, he she went knew that was out there. And they that's implied him. after the fact at best. But still, it's still implied. <laughs> anyway, so she hands him over for some reason. Even even with that, if I gave you that, 
for some reason, she doesn't go with him. Yeah, I don't. I didn't get that either. Why didn't you go with him and be with him side by side the entire time? Because that would make him weak. He's a man, apparently. So <laughs> he uh, he goes to all these different cultures and lands and learns what they have to offer. He goes to <laughs> Egypt. Wait, 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 wait. He goes to <laughs> Egypt. Is oh, probably Egypt. Learns reading and writing from them. Yes. But as far as we know, only learns hieroglyphics. <laughs> uh, everyone speaks English. Some of the cultures are a little racist. <laughs> One of the cultures is a little racist. The rest are just stereotypical. There you go. They go to Africa, where he learns to fight, and the black people person. I think you only see one. Yeah, no, there's a couple. There's a couple. They're all... Um, they're, they're very dark black, which is fine. You know, whatever. That That's a thing. Right. But they kind of look like monkeys. <laughs> kind of. And it feels racist saying it. Yeah. But, like, I didn't draw it, mother like, <laughs> It's a little racist. I'm not going to say. Uh, maybe it wasn't intentional. I'm not going to say it's intentional. I don't know. I don't think it was intentional either, because, like, all the other... Right. It's all stylized. Cultures were very stylized for that culture. But those felt stereotypical, whereas this one felt racist. Yeah. Because, like, you didn't need to draw him like a monkey to get across the fact that he's a f***ing African living in Africa. Right. Teaching him how to fight. Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it happened. <laughs> and then I, he's 25, apparently. I forget how I know that, but he's 25. Okay. And he goes back to his mom. I think he gets the sword from her then. If he didn't have it already, I can't remember. And he goes to fight Aku, and Aku sends him in the future. Well, he kicks Aku's ass, and yes. so Aku sends him to the future to save himself. Which, why oh, his dad was still alive, wasn't he? Oh, yeah, his dad was a slave. I thought he was dead. Yeah. yeah. And then his dad was like, calm yourself. You will not defeat him with anger and swordsmanship. You must be, have inner peace. Well, yeah. Like, no, you're going to cut, cut him in half with your sword. That's what's right. going to happen. I mean, but that's a big part of the plot, his anger. There's a whole episode where he has to fight an evil version. Of yes, stuff. but you didn't see any of that anger before. So I don't know why his father had that conversation with him. You I see mean, it later. That's that's fair. You didn't see it in that early episode. Not not in the slightest. No, but, not know. in the, those first three episodes. You didn't see it in one single. I bit. mean, those first three episodes, plot had a plot. They got it. It's yeah, a well, movie. Well, I we get it, but plot. like, if you're gonna say he has anger issues, and this is why Aku's gonna win, and that's why he should have won in that first fight and sent him to the future, you have to show it to me. Fair enough. Anyway. But yeah, he gets sent to the future. And from that point on, it's episodic. It's, Each episode's a different group of people. He's either helping or figuring out they're actually the bad guy. Yeah, I mean, it's and it's not like the the premises are bad in the episode. No. They're just, I don't know, there's like one where these aliens take over these elephant people <laughs> as using them as slaves. It felt like so purposefully, like, as they're being hit, hurt, like, zapped with an like, electric poker. And it's like, yeah, I don't know, it's just weird. It wasn't. I mean, it didn't feel good at all. It, it's like it's weird how the episode played out because we think the elephant people are horses at the time, and so Jack's like, "Okay, they're horses. I guess you can some sort animals. of cattle." Yeah, animals. Like that. And then they start talking. He's like, "Uh oh," <laughs> <laughs> and he helps capture one. Yeah. Of them. <laughs> and he's like, "Oops, that's kind of funny." <laughs> uh, am I the bad guy? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And then there's the Scotsman one where they're going across this gigantic bridge. And, and they, neither one would move. Yeah, and they're both equally strong. Yeah, the Scotsman had a good point, though. Is like, why would I risk... It's a very wobbly rope bridge. Why would I move to the side and potentially die for you? No. Why not just back up? One of you back up, because, cross, and then the other one cross. Because they've both been walking for days at that point. Go to... Take a nap, mother... Like, you're not on an urgent mission at the moment. It's an overarching plot line that you need to find our coup and kill him. Take a nap. What do you mean take a nap? On the bridge? No, get off the bridge and take a nap. Backtrack for three minutes, get off the bridge, take a nap. No, back, if you backtrack, it would take them three days to get back. Off the bridge? Yeah, off the bridge. It Look, took them three days to get to that point of the bridge? They showed I don't remember that. They showed him walking. It went to night. He was asleep. That, that does not make any sense. That bridge would not be held up. Sean, there's talking dogs I, in this future. That, it's in the future. <laughs> they have evolved. That's actually a plot point. That they're trying to figure out their their origin, and Jack is like, "Oh, you're talking," and they're like, "Oh my god, he confirmed it. We used to not talk." <laughs> I'm just saying, there's all so many ridiculous things. The bridge, the giant bridge that takes days across, is they have reasons for the dogs being able to talk. There's no reason for that bridge to be able to be suspended. There's no reason. For there to be a Scotsman with a magic sword ruin magic. with a machine gun or a leg. Well, he has a machine gun for a leg because it's machete. Or uh, the machine gun girl. Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> that was cool. There's no reason why every enemy that they fight is a robot. Well, uh, it sh they probably shouldn't all be robots, but that's 
what he controls. He controls robots, Aku. Apparently. In the future. But, like, there's a lot of things that don't make sense. There's a lot of magical gems that Aku has not managed to get. Yeah. I don't <laughs> even know why he wants them. Well, one of them grant wishes, which can send Jack back in time. That's why. And so he disguises himself as a woman and flirted with it, Jack. Oh, right. <laughs> that was a weird episode. I mean, you kind of knew it was him the whole time. Just kind look of. at the art style of her. I was kind of like, maybe it's his daughter. Yeah, uh, but yeah. then, you know, it's her, and it's it's him. And, like, it makes the scene right before that really weird, because, like, there's a bunch of, like, females dancing, and, you know, whatever, Jack's just kind of there. He's oblivious. And then there's a male dancing, and Aku, as the female, is, like, bashful almost. Well, I mean... <laughs> but she's bashful purposely because Jack's there, and she's in the dra- Jack. And then there's this big, muscly guy dancing in front of her. Right. It's weird. Now that you know that that's Aku, that was a weird scene. But either there's two possibilities. One, either Aku is just playing it up as an act, just playing the role of being a nice person. Yes. Or he's gay. Yeah. I mean, who cares? Yes. So... There's a live action film. Oh no! I'm looking at the wrong one. I'm looking at Eight Man. You'll we'll talk about that later. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we end up on a weird. We end on the ir- weird one with the gangsters. <laughs> An odd one. Yeah. And Jack looked great in that <laughs> suit. He should always have that suit on. <laughs> Kimono, dude. You look good. Yeah. So he just shows up in a bar that's full of gangsters, like Hollywood. Stars. Yeah. See, I can't even do the voice, but like those kinds of gangsters. And you think this is just going to be a throwaway episode, but no, this is like... <laughs> they get, they a the, big fight with Aku. It's a giant fight with Aku, and it's like... And he almost won. And then the gangsters knocked him out because they thought they were, they were saving him. He's a, Jack's a saint, I would have murdered all those f- gangsters. Well, that's kind of the point. He was a saint. Were they doll gangsters, or were they regular gangsters? I thought they were dogs. No, they were regular people. They were, were they? just really small. For some reason, I thought they were dogs. No. But, like, Jack fought a, a lava monster in one episode, and he he when he found out that the lava monster didn't want to fight, wanted to fight, he was like, I'm not fighting you anymore. Kill me if you have to, but I'm not doing this for your pleasure. And then he, the lava monster revealed that he's an honorable warrior. He's a and Viking. So, and so now he fights. It's a kind of Jack <laughs> thing. He gets delivered to Valhalla. <laughs> yeah, with Odin and Thor and Loki. <laughs> Valkyries come out of the sky and actually physically carry him back up. Before I forget, back to the gangsters. Uh, the gangster literally takes, like, a billy club and knocks him over the head right when he's about to kill Aku. Jack wakes up. They're in their, I guess, apartment. And Jack's like, what are you doing? Why did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> I almost won. <laughs> he did. And they're just oblivious. They're like, oh, no, we saved you. And he's... And, well, and then, apparently, there was a water crystal thing. That controlled the water. water well, Aku water. stole it, but not really. One of the gangsters stole it. So no, Jack stole it. You get well, stole it back. Oh, stole it back from Aku. Yeah. yeah, and uh, then Jack was gonna take it and give it to the people or whatever. And then the gangster was like, "Oh no, we'll do it. We're we're we're, we're going, going legit." legit. And then he just f- start selling it, <laughs> selling the it water. It creates water. <laughs> yeah, he just starts selling the water to people at exorbitant <laughs> prices, apparently. And but what upset me right before that is that Jack wakes up and he doesn't have his sword, it's not on him, and then he leaves without his sword. So where's your sword, Jack? Oh, I didn't even notice. I know. I, for some reason, I noticed it. He always has his sword, but for that scene, he didn't have it, and he left. So, like, where is it? Oh no, he um was it in his suit because the coat he wears it in the holster underneath the coat too, because that was the point. Okay, yeah, okay. because of the gangster thing. They showed that. They showed him. Okay, that. Yeah. must not have sold out. Yeah, like that's the whole point. That they Just were like, like they hide the Tommy gun in there. Yeah, they were like they showed him in the suit, and they're like even they got all the ammo to open the suit and it's in the holster. Okay, there. okay, never mind. <laughs> I don't know. It's not great. I want to say it's slightly below average because I think it does the kid thing wrong and the older audience wrong. Maybe not wrong, just not on mark. I, I definitely think this is a show that ramps up. I, feel I think like so as well, but I, for what I saw. Right. No, no, I, I understand. I do think this is a show if it was split up the seasons. The first season would probably be a 26 episode one mm. rather than a 12. Mm-hmm. Like the one we watch, but we we have biases against long anime now. So, or, so at the end of the the list, are you going to go Samurai Jack again until we finish it? Yes. Oh, no. Yes. I am. I'm going to have to pick a Gundam, just for you. I'm just... I'm telling you, I think it's going to get better, so... All right. Uh, I guess I'll... You know, I'll be very slightly generous and give it a five. Because wow. I, I do think it ramps up. I think it was at a... I was at a five, too. I was closer to a four than a five, but I do really think... Truly think it ramps up and gets better. And I heard last season that this really came out gets really, really dark. Mm. So... I don't 
All right, so we're on to the next list. And we okay. haven't explained this yet, have we? No. So, we're tired. <laughs> tired of getting dog shit. We watch a lot of bad anime because of the wheel. Like, if all the dog shit was only 12 episodes, it wouldn't be that bad. Yeah, no. But it's more often than not 24 episodes or more. Yeah, especially the last, the end of the wheel mm. really hurts. So, we're going to take away the wheel for this round of the for this round of the letters, and we're just going to pick either the best anime within the letter or the shortest if, if, anime. Or if it's a really shit list, and there's only a couple of them in the alphabet. Right. You pick the shortest one. Yes. And so that's... Which brings us... To numbers and symbols. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the numbers and symbols category, we went through all of it. There's a, there's a there's few. There's not a lot left, though. There's only, like, five or six left. Yeah. There's, like, there was a couple episodes in there, uh, anime in there that were, like, four episodes. There was one that was three. Yeah. But we came across one that was called... Well, only had two episodes in it. Called Eight Man. Called Eighth Man. Oh, you have to bring up the Eighth Man description. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so... We we decided to do Eighth Man because it was only two episodes. Eight Man. There you go. Yeah. Two episodes. Genre is action drama mecha science fiction. Why are we reading this? Because we always read. Oh, that's fair. The box art is very sixties esque. Black and white. Murdered by criminals. Detective Yokota's body is retrieved by Professor Tani and taken to his laboratory. There, Tani performs an experiment that has failed seven times. Didn't know that till just now. Yeah, that we just found it. We were they didn't say that we were paying attention in the beginning, too. They did not say that. Yeah, we were wondering what happened to the first seven men, so. <laughs> Where's the seven time? There's <laughs> seven times. Yokota is the latest subject to have his life force transferred into an android body. For the first time, the experiment succeeds. Yokota is reborn as the armor-skinned android Ape Man, able to dash at impossible speeds as well as shapeshift into other people. He shifts himself into Yokota, the time christening himself as this, Hachiru Azuma? This time christening himself as Hachiru. Oh, is that his new name? I, I don't know. He just called himself Botor or Tobor. Maybe this is the Japanese version. I guess. He keeps his identity a secret, known only to Tani and his police chief Tanaka, even his girlfriend Sachiko. And friend Ichiro, do not know he is an android. As eight men, Hachiro fights crime, even bringing his murderers to justice. This is going to be bad, but we'll cover it next week. We actually talked about it. Uh -huh. We gave away that we already watched it. <laughs> Partly my fault. All right, guys, next episode, eight man. Bye. <laughs>